Okay, our goal on this problem is we want to find the difference within a cosine. So we have two angles, 5 pi over 4 minus pi over 6. These two angles are being subtracted inside of our cosine function. So what we want to use is a difference formula. I've listed up above here. We have cosine of alpha minus beta equals cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha times sine of beta. So as we get going on this, I'm first just going to go ahead and label 5 pi over 4 is going to go anywhere we have an alpha, and pi over 6 is going to go anywhere in this formula that we have a beta. So over on the right-hand side, as I kind of fill this in, we're going to say, well, that's the same thing as cosine of alpha, which is 5 pi over 4, multiplied by cosine of beta. So we have cosine, and we said beta was going to be pi over 6, plus sine of alpha again is pi over 6, multiplied by sine of beta, which is 5 pi over 4. So initially, it's just kind of a fill-in. Um, plug 5 pi over 4 in for each of the alphas. Plug pi over 6 in for each one of the betas. From here, we still need to evaluate this, so we're definitely not all the way done. Now, a few of these are going to be easy to evaluate. Cosine of pi over 6, that's one of those um, 30 degrees. You know, that's one of those measures that comes up a bunch. So sine of pi over 6, same idea there. Um, should be very easy to plug in. However, we do have this 5 pi over 4. So we want to plug it into cosine and the 5 pi over 4. We also need to plug into, into sine. So I'm going to do a little bit of side work over here. 5 pi over 4 is not one of those angles that I have memorized, like I do pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. So the first thing I would do in evaluating that is go ahead and put it into the correct quadrant. So just kind of draw in 5 pi over 4. That's an improper fraction. It's going to end up in the third quadrant. So it'll wrap all the way around here. 5 pi over 4 ends up in the third quadrant. And from here to evaluate this, I always like to find the reference angle. So if I draw the reference angle from uh, the terminal side of the 5 pi over 4 back to the x-axis, that reference angle can be computed to be pi over 4. Um, so that's 5 pi over 4 minus pi, which I can strategically write as 4 pi over 4. That's where the pi over 4 comes from for the reference angle. However, when we're plugging in a reference angle, we have to be a little bit careful. What we'd like to do is just plug it in, replace the 5 pi over 4 up in our formula, and I get that. You want to replace cosine of pi over 4. But as we do this, we want to be very, very careful about Plugging in a reference angle, you have to check the sign, okay? Positive or negative as far as cosine of 5 pi over 4 that's in the third quadrant isn't going to be positive or negative. So I go back to this, uh, this phrase, all students take calculus. Being that we're in the third quadrant with the 5 pi over 4, only tangent is, on, is going to be positive. So with that, I need to include a negative in front of the cosine as I plug in that reference angle. And then I'll go ahead and bring along the cosine of pi over 6. I'll bring along the sine of pi over 6. And then I'd like to plug in that reference angle again for this 5 pi over 4 into sine. So sine of pi over 4. However, this is the place where you have to be careful. We're plugging in a reference angle. Our initial angle, the 5 pi over 4, was in the third quadrant. Only tangent would be positive in the third quadrant. We're dealing with a sine function, so it's going to be negative in the third quadrant. This is the place where you want to be very careful and include a positive or negative, in this case a negative, out in front. All right, from here, we want to do a little bit more simplifying down, if at all possible. And I'm just recognizing that I transposed our alpha and our beta here. This is going to turn out the exact same, but technically I should have written sine of 5 pi over 4 first here because it came first, the sine of alpha, in our formula. But we're going to get to the exact same equivalent answer at the end. All right, from here, let's just go ahead and evaluate stuff. All right, so I'm going to bring along that negative sign. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Plus sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And then sine, or we can bring along the negative sine of pi over 4 is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. 
and this negative carried along, that's the negative out in front here. All right, we can do a little bit more reducing down, but we're almost done with this. We can combine these fractions together by multiplying numerators, multiplying denominators. As we multiply those numerators, um, you're allowed to multiply underneath the square roots together. So two times three under the square root, but it remains under a square root. And then I'm gonna bring along that negative. That negative is gonna come out in front. And then as we multiply our numerators, we're gonna get square root of two. Multiply the denominators, we're gonna get a four. Um, one last bit of simplifying. We probably don't have to go this uh, extreme, but you can go ahead. We already have a common denominator. So we can put those numerators together over the common denominator. This is probably the best answer we can get to. All right, hope this helps out. Um, just kind of label everything as you go and you're getting used to these formulas and then plug in appropriately with the correct angle. And then uh, simplify down as you go. Sometimes getting a reference angle is very handy as far as evaluating these using those nice angles that we see a lot. All right, good luck.